next we have Mark Galanter, a professor at New York Law School, John and Ryla Beauchard, professor of law and South Asian studies at the University of Wisconsin, and Centennial professor at the London School of Economics and Political Science. And more important than all of that, <laughs> his latest book, uh, Lowering the Bar, Lawyer Jokes and Legal Culture, is just out in paperback. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, this is a I, I want to talk a, a little bit about lawyer jokes, which, as you all know, have become markedly more numerous, more prominent, more hostile over the past quarter century. Uh, the very period within which Jews have multiplied and flourished in the higher echelons of the legal world. Both Jews and the jokes arrived in conjunction with some profound changes in the relation of, of lawyers to American society. On the one hand, it's been a period of increasing resort to and dependence upon lawyers who have emerged as the dominant profession in American life. At the same time, regard for lawyers has diminished. They become the targets of waves of attacks. Uh, esteem for them has plummeted, uh, along with a general collapse of confidence in law and government. So what do lawyer jokes tell us about Jewish lawyers. Well, if we look for direct evidence uh, uh, of jokes about Jewish lawyers, the answer is nothing uh, or very little. There are lots of jokes about Jews and in recent years even more about lawyers. But there's actually hardly any jokes about Jewish lawyers. I, I, I'm not sure that there's really any in circulation today uh, in any significant way. And I checked on this impression, by, uh, let me say I'm open to being corrected on this, always happy to hear jokes. But I checked on this by Googling lawyer joke, came up with 107,000 results. I then Googled Jewish lawyer joke and came up with three results, none of which led me to a genuine specimen. So, uh, but if we extend the inquiry back over the past century, well, there's a few more uh, which none have really survived. Uh, and uh, <coughs> discrimination uh, against uh, Jewish lawyers is certainly, certainly uh, uh, very much uh, uh, changed the scene from the, what it was earlier in the, in the 20th century. Uh, so I'm, I'm not saying that the jokes about the, the absence of jokes about Jewish lawyers mean that their presence went uh, unremarked or uncontested. There was a lot of, of discrimination and exclusion uh, that just, uh, gave way after the, the Second World War, uh, and, and you're going to hear a lot about that today, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, to go into that. Uh, the, now, so Jewish lawyers have, have begun to, to uh, flourish uh, throughout the legal profession. Uh, how many are there? Well, we don't really know. Uh, we know that back in 1960, about one in every six law students was, was Jewish, but uh, law school enrollments after that uh, expanded dramatically while the Jewish population has remained static. So the proportion of Jews in the profession has actually uh, fallen. Uh, we just ran out of Jews. Uh, at the same time, the, 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 the collapse of discrimination has increased the presence of Jews in the higher echelons of the profession. Anyway, it, it wouldn't be surprising if, if the public uh, overestimated the portion of, of lawyers who are Jewish, because perceptions of the, of the Jewish population run roughly about 10 times the, the actual percentage. Uh, and so it's particularly striking how faint an impression the intersection of Jews and lawyers has left in the, in the popular imagination. Apart from a minority uh, within that minority that, that cultivates conspiratorial fantasies about Jewish do uh, domination. There is some talk about Jewish lawyers there, but not, not, not a lot. Uh, popular uh, understanding. Uh, so what are the connections between between uh, lawyer jokes and, and Jews. Well, popular understanding is always attributed to Jews of a proclivity 
to, to excessive use of legal remedies. Uh, they use the law frequently and, and inappropriately and so forth. And I was going to skip this particular story, but Richard uh, uh, reminded me of it today. So it, there were, in the early part of the 20th century, if, say the first half of the century, a lot of jokes about conniving claimants of various kinds. And, and not all of them targeted Jews, but a significant portion did. And, and, and the Jews were ready to resort to the legal system to invent or, or magnify injuries. And um, but just to give you a sense of the flavor of that, uh, Ike came upon a crowd at the crossing, the wreckage of an automobile and two men gasping on the ground. Was it an engine, he asked one of them. Yes, yes, he was answered. Did they blow the whistle? No, no. Did they ring the bell? No. Has the claim agent come yet? No. Do you mind if I lie here down? Lie down here, Mitchell. OK. So that's, that's very, uh, lots and lots of those jokes about, as I say, conniving claimants. Uh, part of a, uh, Jews were widely regarded as, as, as only partly within the moral community. And one sign of that was their inappropriate affinity for opportunistic use of the legal system. Uh, but these jokes about conniving claimants have actually faded into obscurity after World War II. But the cultural concern with unfounded and exploitative claiming didn't go away. Rather, it intensified. And the notion that some people have inappropriate recourse to the legal system has been kind of de-ethnicized. And now it's a very generalized worry about frivolous litigation and the litigation explosion. Uh, so the overuse of the legal system is no longer uh, attributed just to ethnic outsiders, uh, but, uh, but everybody's suing everybody else, et cetera. And observations, the, the genre has also changed from jokes, uh, which after all rely on depictions of deviance, to legends which portray the expected rather than the surprising. Uh, so these conniving claimant jokes were about Jewish litigants, not Jewish lawyers. Um, and uh, how jokes about Jewish lawyers? Well, my research on the history of lawyer jokes uh, turned up only a handful. Uh, the earliest one, interestingly, depict it, it, this is uh, at a time when Jews were not uh, present in the in great numbers in the in, prominent roles in the legal system. But this is actually a, jo a story about collaboration between two of the country's most prominent lawyers. Um, Joseph Choate, the great lawyer, now I'm, uh, I'm reading this as a 1905 version. Uh, Choate, now ambassador to the court of St. James, on a very important case, Edward Lauterbach, an eminent Jewish attorney was associated with him. They won their case, and when it came to deciding upon the fee, Mr. Choate, the Christian, asked Mr. Lauterbach, the Jew, what he thought they ought to charge. Mr. Lauterbach said he thought $5,000 would be a fair charge. Mr. Choate replied, no, no, it shouldn't be less than $15,000. Said Mr. Lauterbach, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. <laughs> Now, this mocking reference of the Jew uh, attempted to abandon his, his faith to enjoy the greater fees of the Christian lawyer is obvious. But the Jewish lawyer's response is, is ironic. It's as if to say, well, you guys say we're out for a buck and drive a hard bargain, but you're behind your cloak of respectability. You should certainly outdo us. Uh, as I said, this joke uh, was around. It's 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 no longer it's no longer current, uh, and in fact, uh, th there are really very few jokes about Jewish lawyers. And curiously, and I, unfortunately, I can't go into them. They're in the book, but, or maybe they're not in the book actually. But they'll be in this paper when it's finally finished. Uh, the the.